I meant like voice exercises. Oh. Like me, 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 <clears throat> Does that help you? No. What did you learn from that? I learned I hate the Raiders. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> Why wasn't I worth fighting for? <laughs> so I walk inside and first I see mom and mom looks at me like what are you doing here and I could tell something was off so I was like dad must be home dad comes right around the corner and he's like you could tell he was heated I think personally that he had just seen our evening tea with Eskel the Sunday one <laughs> and yeah. he's like get out you are not welcome here he and all this that. stuff yeah and I was just like uh, I like froze there and I got like super quiet because like he said it super loud So even mom was just sitting there and I was right next to the door So I was just about to Wait, go out. What did we like, say about dad on Colty? Well, uh, that his wives cut, threw him out and like threw stuff. I don't remember. Oh, well, that's what <laughs> that's what really happened I know, so I know. It, why it's is that true. talking bad? That's what literally happened. Uh-huh. Yeah And if but you think that so that's heated. bad, then maybe you should that's your problem not ours mm -hmm. <laughs> We're the kids that had to live with your ass <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So he's That's he's crazy. mad that you're talking about about him, and he he told you to leave. Did you mm -hmm. leave? Well, I was just about to, but then I noticed it was super quiet, and everyone was looking at me. So I was like, in my head, I was like, if I leave now, we're right back to where we started. But if I just try, like, to stay a little longer or say something or get him to talk more, maybe maybe this could turn into something more. Or, or like maybe people like my the other kids that were listening or mom that was listening would see that. He's the one that's crazy pushing me out, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not the one starting a fight or anything. So I just asked him, like, why do you feel that way? And it was even hard because it was super quiet. I was just, like, just about to leave, and I was just sitting there. I just asked, kind of, like, look up, and I'm like, why do you feel that way? And he's like, are you kidding me? How would you like it if we went all over the Internet and said every single bad thing that ever happened about you? And I was just kind of like, well, I mean, if it's true, I mean, everyone knows I'm human. We all make mistakes and just kind of trying to reason with him. And he's then he kind of got to the point like, why are you even here? You just want trying to bring down our family and find more bad things to talk about. And I was like, well, this is my family. Yeah. I just want to spend time with my siblings and stuff. And he's my like, my family too. <laughs> mm hmm. And you could tell he was just so heated and he's talking about, well, you made all these different choices. And, and then the funny thing is mom pitched in and mom was all like, Esco, you can have a relationship with me, but just not right, not when like dad's here, not when there's, there's a lot of family complications and stuff like that. You're like, we just have to have our own relationship, se relationship separate and stuff. Like, and like, like you can have a relationship with her, but on her terms is what she's saying? Basically, yeah. And only her and not with the kids, basically, yeah. you know? She said that to me mm -hmm. a lot. And then I asked her, like, is well, then, is there any way that I can have relationships with the family, with, like, my siblings? And she didn't know what to say, so she looks at Dad, and Dad's just like, well, yeah, of course you can if you follow all of our rules and you listen to everything that we tell you to do. And I was like, oh, so I basically have to join the order again? And he's like, he starts sharing this analogy, because it basically, the answer is, Obviously, yeah, the only way that he's going to be okay with it is if I'm in the order. But he starts sharing this analogy, and he basically says, like, well, you are going, you have to be willing and at least open-minded to having the gospel in your life and joining us in God's kingdom. And I was just like, well, we both know I have different beliefs, and I don't want to go to the same church as you, so is there any way we can put our beliefs aside and still have a good relationship? And he goes on this big old analogy, basically saying no because... Um, the biggest core of what he wants is for me to listen to him because he's the one, the man above me or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And we kept on going in circles. I kept on trying to like, to me at one point, I literally thought in my head like, let me just keep on asking him enough questions that hopefully he'll even realize how crazy his answers are. How he's, he's just constantly saying, no, there's no way around doing anything that's against what he would want. That's against me basically bowing down to him and doing everything that he wants me to do and living the exact life that he wants me to live. Otherwise, there, there's no way I can have any relationship with my siblings at all. So did he say like uh, a number of a list of rules and then the amount of time? Because like that's the thing is I know some people that have left the order and their family say if you don't go on any TVs and talk about us and you respect us, then we'll let you have a relationship with your family. And then they did everything that they were supposed to for years and they never were able to go see the family. So it's like mm -hmm. how long do you have to be doing it for? A week? A month? 
the rest of your life and then when <laughs> you're in heaven you can be together is that what he's saying <laughs> pretty much i i noticed though every time i was trying to get like straightforward answers to him he wouldn't and so i kept on having to somewhat repeat the question and eventually it, it essentially got to where no i'm not allowed to have a relationship with my siblings and i even said well what if even they want to like are you going to control them and he says of course another analogy but he's like or what would you just let your kids go play out in the street school and let them go and get ran over and i'm just like well we're talking about full grown adults here you're still going to control them till the day you die basically and he's like i will happily like i'm still going to keep them from the street in any way that i can and I'm but just don't like, you trust oh, but your teachings that they wouldn't go in the street. Like how you I guess he doesn't trust his own teachings. So he mm. has to be uh, hovering over them all of the time, making sure they're making the right choices. Mm. And he kept talking so much about just basically forcing all of his kids to do the right thing and, and go to heaven with him. So I was talking to him about that analogy about like how you're just going to basically try and drag all your kids to heaven, even if it might be against their will, then you're just going to force them. Which is so funny it's because like... we always talked about that analogy in the <clears throat> order where Satan's plan was force and Jesus's plan was free agency mm -hmm. and they were like that's why we like Jesus because he chose free agency and mm -hmm. Satan chose force well what is dad doing mm -hmm. Satan said to force everyone to do the right thing but you we I remember them talking about this the reason why we can't force is because they need to choose to do the right thing not be forced to do it because if you choose to do it you actually get the blessings and so he's mm -hmm. if he I hope he's watching this if he's forcing his kids to do the right thing they're not gonna get the blessings anyways so mm -hmm. there you go. If you believe in your own teachings, you're going against your own teachings. Mm -hmm. But he's just going to sit here and watch this and go. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> That's all he's going to do. <laughs> oh, man. If he, man. Yeah, he was already really mad. That's like, uh, it's crazy. how <laughs> This is how I know he watches all of our stuff, though, because he was talking about that specific stories that I've mentioned about him that he was just thought that I was. He just didn't like, basically. But I saw Paul's wife, Patty. Well, bleep her name. Well, we probably can keep it in. Paul's first wife today at Spirit Halloween. Oh. Buying, like, costumes. I'm like, what are you doing? Dang. You spending the order's money? The order don't have it. You don't need it. <laughs> what are you doing over there? I always thought it was ironic uh. that you could catch them at all these outside businesses, yet they would scold us for... Mm -hmm. That's what I think the same thing with Dad. I think he's scolding. And saying forcing is okay, forcing them to do the right thing is okay, but then it's like when the teaching says it's wrong, you know, but it's okay for you to do it. It's like, no matter what, we lose. No matter what, we're going to lose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and this is a big part of why I wanted to keep the conversation going, because a lot of what he was saying was just, he was, what's that word when you just won't budge at all? He was basically... Stubborn? He, well, he was stubborn, but Set he, his ways. <laughs> yeah, in all jerk. of those, <laughs> but really he just was not willing to work with anyone in any way. Be there was no, yeah, he was completely, um, closed minded to everything. And to me, I kept on coming back to the conversation. Like, obviously we have different beliefs, but we already established that. So I kept saying, we have different beliefs. Is there any way that we can still have a good relationship without having to bring up our beliefs every single time? Like I was trying to share and I kind of threw mom under the bus a little bit, but I talked about how she hangs out with the girls and with me all the time with us that have left. And like, we just don't necessarily I talk about religion all the that time. Much. There's been times where, like, I like that she was like, you and I weren't allowed yeah. at the house. That's true, yeah. So I mean, it is rare, I, but I, I mean, like, he, he, to him, all the time is is because it's more than most than like most people in the order can't even have that opportunity. Well, and it's like because like I've seen my dad what four times in the last six years that I've been gone. So it's like compared to that, then yeah, I see my mom way often, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's like. It's funny because also I noticed that mom was not wanting to say anything because she was just on the sidelines and she knows that she still has a little bit of a relationship with us and like, you know, goes and visits Cammy and like does well, stuff with her. Well, he has to know too because he, mm -hmm. he's like, just like how he hovers over the kids, he hovers over her. Mm -hmm. So there's no way he doesn't know. So yeah. did he act shocked? No, no, no. Like, I'm sure he knows, but it's funny because he was saying that basically there's no way for that relationship to still happen when my mom's still making it happen, you know? Like, it's still, we can still get along and, like, enjoy each other's company and build good relationships without having to have religion demand that we force it onto the other per person or, you know, just have such issues with them. Yeah. But Sometimes, I so, I don't know if you feel this way, but lately I've been feeling like... 
mom would always play like, oh, dad doesn't let me and dad this and dad that. And for a long time, I would be like, oh, stupid dad, poor mom. But now I'm just like, you're sitting there standing by. Well, mom likes to use dad as the blame, you know, yeah. guide a lot of the blame to him. But she supports him and encourages him and everything. And, well, not everything. They they fight a lot, as you know from yeah. our previous but videos. Like, yeah, there have <laughs> been times where I watched things happening to the kids and dad was doing to the kids. And then I would look over at mom and wait for her to, to protect her kids. And she wouldn't. So... Is she just as much of an issue? Is it just as much to of a To an extent. I mean, like, I still feel bad for a lot of those situations, but we did not get beat as bad as the first wives kids. So, I and I feel like the only reason is because of mom. Mom... How well, do you know that? Oh, I know. Trust you do me. know? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I've heard way too many crazy stories. And, like, we, we've been through a lot, but it's like, at least our mom, when it would get really extreme, our mom would step in, but our mom still had a sense of loyalty to our dad and like if she didn't feel the extreme need to step in she wouldn't which is very sad she watched a lot of us get hit over and over by her dad and she just thought i mean maybe she was young maybe she didn't fully understand but she allowed a lot of crazy things to happen but when it did get really extreme she did at least try to step in or like try to intervene and stuff like that whereas i know that our first wife lets like doesn't stop at all like when i hear stories from my half siblings they talk about how when basically when dad was there their mom was a completely different person and would never intervene never would have any say in any type of punishments that dad would give whereas with our mom she would at least say her opinion she wouldn't necessarily step in and like stop much but she would at least say how much she didn't like it or like try to convince him to not to or or maybe make whatever we did not sound quite as bad you know mm. and, or something like that whereas i know at the first wife's home i've heard of people really getting beat up there yeah <laughs> and, it's rough. and it's i don't know it's got to be a mixture of a lot of things but there's a lot of mothers in the order that they've kind of just zoned out because they have so many kids so they're kind of just zombieing through life or like just like that they're a different person when the man's around because it's like almost like a defense mechanism it's like a safety thing it's like a survival mode thing you can kind of come out of your shell and be your personality and talk to your kids just like that mom can talk to us and then when when the you know big it's almost like the big bad scary guy comes home and then you pretend to be someone else and there's been so many times where i wonder who mom really is or well, it's been like 30 have, years yeah. of her playing the split personality. I feel like it's basically, she's just that, as good at being either one. Yeah. You know? I don't think that she ever really will know who she is unless she finally does leave dad. Because who she is has become so much of him mm -hmm. that there, is there any mom left in there? You know? Like, mm -hmm. is there any version of her? Because you think she had 17 years of her life without him. Well, technically, he was married <clears> in the family <throat> when she was younger. So, but 17 years of her life without being married to him. Mm -hmm. The rest of her life, he has consumed her. Yeah. So, well, the mom we know he's... may not even be the mom that she is. Like, because because we talk about this too, your survival mode. You put this, me and Jessica were talking about, you put this survival jacket on where you think you need all these things and you think you need to act a certain way. You think you need to say th certain things because you're in that survival mode. And if she was out living freely and being allowed to be who she wants to be, who would that be? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. We may never know. Yeah, that's a, this one of the saddest thoughts I think about mom because sometimes I get so frustrated with her and then I but it kind of is a comforting thought at the same time because it's like that's not even her. That's yeah. what the religion has made her to be. Mm -hmm. She's a product of that. And that's what all the women are. They're just a product of what they were supposed to be. But do you ever get this feeling of why wasn't I worth fighting for? Why, why did you choose dad oh, over me? I, well, I asked dad a similar question because he was all like, uh, well, I asked him basically, somehow we got on the topic where it's like, I was saying something along the lines of that I never had a personal connection with my dad. I've never felt truly loved by him. I feel like we don't have a, a relationship at all. And he's like, that's a lie. I loved you. I took good care of you. And I was like, I said something very similar to I was like, then why was I not worth reaching out to or ever trying to talk to when I left? Why was it an automatic 
like you just never saw me again the moment I decided to leave the order. And he says, well, the relationship go starts from the child. The child is the one that builds it with the parent. You and existed like, before us. Yep. You existed before us. Why is the mm -hmm. toddler the one that has to make sure that we have a relationship? What? We well, I know why. It's because he's got so many. He doesn't have time to build it. The kids have to. But and that's basically the, his analogy. But he's, he's the, the dad. He's, he's the, the parent. He's knowing He knows everything, right? He knows everything. <laughs> so how are we supposed to know how to do that, daddy? <laughs> You're supposed to teach us. <clears throat> what did you learn from that? I learned I hate the Raiders. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> Oh, man. But I even with that analogy, with his supposed, the kid's supposed to be trying harder than the parent, whatever, um, I I don't think I actually said this in the conversation, but I've been to the family home multiple times. I have tried to be able to keep a relationship with my siblings and with the family, and he's never been in my house. He's reached out to me like three times in the six years that I've been gone, all of those because he's upset about something or mad or angry mm -hmm. basically and, and that's like how you keep a relationship you contact <laughs> him only when you're angry <laughs> learn mm -hmm. it from the best and you get upset but it's pump. it's like um like what i was saying like no matter what <clears throat> he's right well no matter what he's never in the wrong he's on the uh, he's on his pedestal i hope that he one day looks up characteristics of a narcissist he checks all the boxes <laughs> Mm -hmm. and you well know, and it's like <clears throat> maybe narcissist is a better word but i always think of it as like a god complex he technically cannot say that he should be treated like a god and he's a godly figure because that would be blasphemy but in all of the aspects of the way he tells you to tie back to him and treat him and and to have a relationship with him it's as if he's a god we are basically supposed to worship him do everything according to him adjust mm -hmm. everything to his schedule like cater to him in every way and it's yep. like, that's definitely just something like, in his head. Yeah, just like that. It's the kid's responsibility to have the relationship with him and to, but it's like, the whole thing is opposite of what a dad should be, of what a parent should be for the kid. Well, of anyone that truly loves the person in the relationship, he's just so quick at giving up and like throwing things out and moving on because he's got so many kids. It's just crazy. Yeah, but. and that's what it felt like um, because he has over 30 kids that, like, what's losing one kid? Okay, try again with the next. What's another? Okay. But it's also, like, he doesn't want to take any accountability or responsibility for any of his actions. And if he realized, if he would just listen to some of the things we're saying, he probably would have a better relationship with the kids he actually cares about. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I am fairly positive that because of he knows now that a lot of his kids will openly say anytime he's abusive or any of the things that he does to take advantage of them, I, it's got to make him think twice before he hits the kids, you know? Yeah. It's got to make our younger siblings have at least somewhat of a better life, hopefully. I think but. talking about it, like I'm never going to stop talking about it, especially when he says to stop, like it makes me want to talk about it more. <laughs> like, so just say it. Mm -hmm. But... I know for a fact that speaking up does not make him want to do it more, you know? Mm -hmm. And putting it out there more is going to make the awareness more known. And hopefully the kids know that they have rights. Oh, yeah. They shouldn't be treated like that. Mm hmm. Definitely. So. And to me, like, because his big question is why do you go and say these things about me? And I, my answer to that is basically because he can't fathom, can't even imagine or understand in any way why I don't see him as a perfect person, why I don't trust his every word and let him guide me to the person I'm supposed to marry, let him choose my career and basically um, tell me how to live my whole life. It's like, well, I, I guess I have to point out all of these things that you de that I personally have seen you do that have made me not trust you, not want to just give my um everything to you and just trust you with my whole life mm -hmm. and everything that i'm going to be it's like you've got to be able to see it. it's it, it, he must that's why i keep thinking he's like thinks he's so great and so like this godlike person because it just blows his mind that people wouldn't want to trust him and his every word it's honestly a favor to him that that you're telling him you're telling him why you don't trust him like to help mm -hmm. it's like helping you understand as your son helping you understand but he just sees it as a very disrespectful thing but i think it's mm -hmm. quite interesting how how contradicting a lot of the things he's saying is because oh Esco why would you say those things about me what is what are you saying about us 
We are learning from you again, yet again. Mm-hmm. What is he saying about you? What well, is he I remember you? even when I was in the order when you first left and when Cameron left, he had horrible things. I literally thought you were broke and had no money next to being homeless and all this stuff because of how bad he would talk to, talk about you. And it would be naive of me to think, oh, he only said that about Cammy and Amanda. Surely it stopped after I left. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's Gu- like, guaranteed uh, he's saying things about you. And I... I Here's the thing. I thought that he talked mad smack on me when I first left because the, to, to try to make the kids to, like look away and not want to be, trust me. But apparently he's still, it's been nine years, he's still coming up with like lies to say about me. Which is crazy because we haven't seen each other in forever. And so it's like, mm-hmm. does he tell his, do, do his kids ask, like, how do you know this? If they should ask, how do you know this? Like, what are you kidding me though? Me. Don't you remember when you were that young and and like under his influence and used to letting him control everything? Like for you to question his word question. was like dangerous. You would have to have all the fat. You'd have to have so much stuff for him so that he doesn't get just freaking mad at you or yeah. like you know. It was just so many things that could go wrong that it's like it's but not I worth it. He he controls your money. He controls where you're gonna work. He controls mm-hmm. everything. And if he's upset at you, it's like. He can ruin you. And the kids ugh. are smart, though, because I remember at 15 catching dad in lies. Mm-hmm. I remember 15 years old, I was like, that's not true. Like when they were trying to say that Chanel beat up our brother, but they took our brother to jail and not Chanel. I was like, oh Chanel's God. like 92 pounds. <laughs> our brother's like over 200 pounds. The story's not adding up. Mm-hmm. And so I would investigate. And I feel like I had to. Every time I would hear something that dad would say, I would have to investigate. Because when I would just believe it, then, you know, th- there's so many things that I'm like, oh my gosh, that was a lie. Still, to this day, like, oh, he was lying. <laughs> he was lying about that. But mm-hmm. I think our siblings are smart, and maybe they're not going to ask, like we were saying. They don't want to question because they're scared. Mm-hmm. But I bet there's times where dad's saying what you're doing and what I'm doing and what Rachel's doing what Cammy's doing. And there's times where in their mind they're like, how does he know this? Mm-hmm. Where is he getting this information? He yeah. doesn't see us. <laughs> mm-hmm. but. And I even think sometimes he just makes stuff up and says it because he's supposed to be the man above them, you know? He's supposed to basically receive revelation for those that are under him and kind of spiritually know these things. So it's like, I feel like he's kind of just gotten used to just BS a bunch, you mm-hmm. know? Just say whatever he wants. And it, and if it ever gets questioned and comes back to he can just say he just knows because he's a spiritual person. Yeah. <laughs> Like, um, oh. I did ask him when I was younger because he was trying to taint someone's, uh, someone's that I really liked. He was trying to taint them for me so that I wouldn't like them anymore. And he was like, oh, yeah, they smoke weed. And I was like, how do you know that? And they were like, oh, this person said that they saw them do it. And I was like, so you know for a fact because you said that this person said that they saw him do it. Like, hmm. and So then, he's trusting that person's word just 100%? Yeah, like, but no, no, no. Hmm. I think he made it up. Oh. I think what because I asked, he had to come up with something. Oh. Because I wouldn't believe, he knew I wouldn't believe him. Huh. So I really do think if they would ask, and they, but that's the thing is, he could just get, he could just get mad, or he could try to just think of a lie on the spot. Mm-hmm. Huh. But, I don't know. Yeah. It just sucks that he feels like he has to control everything. Yeah. It's like And it's also crazy. because just like that, no one has ever questioned him. No one ever tells him no. Oh, and it's because like he loves this idea of the law of one above another that you have to do everything the person above you tells you to a T. Ah, oh, I just died. Darn it. I thought it was plugged in. That's good. It is plugged in. That's what's weird. It's Hello? literally gonna be three seconds. No one even makes it to the end of the video anyways. <laughs> yeah they do. I'm like Put that in anyways.